A member of the Obsidian community has built this website which is amazing for those getting started with DataView as a plugin inside of Obsidian and it helps with basic DataView queries. Pushing the start button gets you through the process of building out a query inside of Obsidian. Here I have a completely brand new vault, it's called Query Builder. If I add a new file in, use three backticks and then type DataView, I don't have the community plugin so nothing works. What I first need to do is go into the community plugins tab, turn on community plugins, browse, find the data view community plugin, install it, enable it, go to options, and then you have all of the options that you can mess around with data view, but we don't actually need to play with any of those because now you see we get a data view error because the plugin is trying to read what we wrote inside of this code block, and this is where the query builder comes in handy. The first question asks what type of result we want from the query, whether it's a list, table, task, or calendar. Once I've clicked on the list view, you can see it's creating the code block down the bottom, which you can then copy to clipboard. And then when you're inside of Obsidian, if you paste, it pastes the code block plus everything that you've edited inside of the query builder. So if I click on task, it changes it to task. If I click on calendar, it changes it and asks for a due date. And if I click on table, which is probably the most popular type of data view query, it then gives me an option to list out the table columns. And when looking at a blank Obsidian file, there are no columns or fields or metadata or anything to use. So by adding in three dash lines, enter three dash lines, and then going in between those, I can now add what's called metadata or front matter to this file. If I then type out a word with a colon after it, it's now added a field to the metadata front matter inside of this file. For those familiar with Notion, this is like the properties of a database. They're the columns of the database. So going back to my query builder, we have a status field, then comma, and a priority field. And now you can see we've got table, status, priority, copy that to clipboard, paste it into Obsidian. And then when I click out, it shows me a table view with a status column and a priority column of the new file. You can see this is the new file it's showing. And when I add something to this status property or status field, you can see I've added done to the new file and the status is now done next to new file. If I then create a second file, there's no fields or metadata in there yet. You then either manually add this information in or use something like templates, the default templates plugin, templater, or use something like metadata menu or loads of other options to add this sort of information in. But if I add working to the status and high to priority and have a look back at the new file and look at the data view query, you can see we've got the second file and it's working and high priority. So now I've selected the type of query I want, I'm gonna go next. Now I want to be more specific about the sources. If I want to include every single note or file inside of Obsidian, I can click this and you can see inside the query, it hasn't done anything. And that's because by default, DataView will look at every single file, which is why when we're looking at this result, you can see new file and second file, they're both showing because they're the only files we have in the vault, but if we were to add more, they would always appear. I could look for a source for a particular tag. So when I tick this, you can see it says name of the tag and I name the tag. So let's look for all of the projects. And what it's done is added a line from, so from what source, and then project. And so copy to clipboard. And now when I paste it into Obsidian, it's now going to only show projects. And you can see I've already added a tag. This is a front matter tag. So I've added tag, colon, and then project. But it could also be done by typing hash and then with no spaces, project. So I've now added the project tag inside of the file rather than inside of the front matter. And if you open up the tags pane for me as default, it's going to be in the right side panel. You can see there's the project and there is one tag in it. There is one file with project with it, which is the second file at the moment. And you can see the data view query is only surfacing the second file, not the new file. All of these other options are pretty much exactly the same. You just need to pick what name of the folder, what name of the file, what name of the root folder or anything. You need to select that and type it in. And what it will do is create the query for you. So let's use this one as an example. I only want to show notes that are linked to from a specific note. So second file, you can see we've got outgoing bracket bracket, and then we've got the second file link. So copy to clipboard. And once I've pasted in, you can see outgoing bracket, and then you've got the actual file in there. And when I go into the second file, you can see in the outgoing links panel, there is nothing there because there's no outgoing links in this file. 
However, if I come into here, go bracket, bracket, so these are square brackets, and then add new file, the new file is an outgoing link in a second file, which means it's going to show in the data view query. If you have any questions about what any of these mean, you can click on the question mark and it will take you to documentation, which explains more about what data view does and what the query is that you're looking to do can actually do. So now that I'm happy with the source, I can click next and it's going to take me to filters. Again, the option at the top is by default, it's just going to surface everything using the from source statement. So anything from the source is going to show. Now I have just changed the source from the outgoing link to the project tag, so it's a little bit simpler to see, but we can then add what's called a where filter. In this case, I only want to see notes where a particular field exists. So going back to Obsidian, if I go to the second file and add another field, say video true or false, so is this going to be a video, yes or no, this file, the second file, has a video field but the new file doesn't. And I only want to see projects, because that's the source we're looking for, that is either going to be a video or not. So I'm looking for the video field because it's going to be something I'm doing, it's a project I'm doing that might be a video but might just be a written blog post. Copy to clipboard. Now when I paste it in and come out, you can see it's looking for only the second file because the second file has a video field. If I get rid of that video field, this second file will disappear because it doesn't have that field in the file. But what if I want a field to show a specific number, say uh, an array or a string or anything like that? Well, I can click this option and I'll say name of field. So I'm looking for the status field and I want it to check for anything that's working. So I'm looking for any project that contains a status of working. Copy to clipboard, paste it in Obsidian, and you can see it's showing the second file because the status is working. If I change that status to done, you can see the file will disappear from the query because it's no longer working. Change it back to working and now it's going to appear again. Now that I've figured out the filter, I now want to sort the results. In this case, I want to have it sorted based on the note name, so the file name. And you can see sort file.name. Let's copy that and paste it into the query and now we have the second file but if we add a third file so i'm just going to make a copy and then say third file you can see because it's status and working it's showing so the third file is there and it's sorting on the file name if i rename it a file this name will change to a file and because a is before s alphabetical it's now going to go to the top of the list because that's the change of the sort if you're then happy with the sort and go to the next option, you can then choose the sort direction, whether it's ascending or descending. So A to Z, Z to A, 9 to etc, etc. So let's go to descending and it adds a DESC on the end. Copy and paste. And now when we have a look, we've got the A down the bottom because obviously A is after S grouping so if you want to group results again the first option is no i want to keep everything on one line so it doesn't actually add anything but maybe you want to group it through any of these options so let's just use the first one as an example i'm going to group based on the folder they belong to so you can see down the bottom it's added a group by file dot folder so again copy and paste and now when i come out it's grouping by the file dot folder now both of these are in the same folder but if we put them into folders, so we've got blog projects, a file is in blog projects, and then we've got the second file in video projects, you can now see we've grouped them by blog projects and video projects. Then if there are loads of results, you can set a limit, so you can show everything by default, or you can set a limit to the amount of results shown, and let's say we only want to see 10, it then adds limit 10 at the bottom of the query, copy, paste, now I've removed the descending sort order and removed the grouping because it adds a bit of complexity making it hard to see with all of these, these particular examples. But now when I click out, you can see it's showing a file because alphabetically that's the first one, then second file and then goes all the way down. Yes, it uses the numbers all the way down showing 10 results rather than every single file you can see in the bolt. Then once you've done with that, it will then take you to this end page where you can copy to the clipboard and put it into your Obsidian. But there are loads of other things you can do with data view and that's where you may want to go to the Discord to get some help and get some ideas about what you may want to do and change the way this query looks. And something else I urge you to look into is this Obsidian Example Vault for data view queries and there are loads of queries, some really advanced, some quite basic and it helps you understand what's really going on behind the scenes when you start making these things for yourself. And again, this is a free download and I'll link everything in a link in the description below.